Well, if you can believe it, Sunday marks 15 years since the attacks that killed nearly 3,000 people on 9-11. Take a look at this if you have a second. Millions have viewed these photos of an unusual ray of light reflecting Ooh. off One World Trade just days before the 15th anniversary of the 9-11 terror attacks. You know, Ben Sterner says he looks at the building every day, but yesterday morning was the first time he's seen anything like this. And this picture was taken at 7-11 yesterday morning. A photographer says the light stayed there for about 10 minutes. He did not alter the photo in any way. Why, Bill, what do you make of it? It's heavenly. It sure is. Absolutely isn't it? heavenly. Sometimes you don't need a science explanation. Just mm. enjoy what they give you. Wow, those images are gorgeous. Right. Absolutely. I saw the most incredible rainbow I've ever seen out here. That's just that's perfect. Yeah, it shows it? the rainbow appears to start right at the World Trade Center site. Isn't that something? Getting a lot of reaction online just one day ahead, of course, of the 14th anniversary of 9-11. Beautiful picture. Beautiful shot. All right. The man who took the photo says he was standing here on the waterfront in Hoboken, New Jersey, when he captured the heavenly image. It was 9.30 at night, and he was taking photos of the 9-11 memorial across the Hudson River. Rich McCormick took the photo. I didn't realize the image was there until I went back to my camera and saw it, and I enlarged it a little bit. I said, what's that white light up there? And when I lodged it, and I kept enlarging, I said, wow, this is amazing. Whatever it is, there's no denying this tribute in light is inspiring the world. This is so absurd, it's almost comical. It truly seems like the alarm bell keeps ringing and, and nobody's doing anything. The university that Vanderbilt built is instructing its faculty to introduce themselves to students in a new way. Not with just their name, but their preferred pronoun. The school advises them to, quote, offer your name and pronoun in faculty meetings, committees, and other spaces. <laughs> Now, if these guidelines are confusing <laughs> to you, Vanderbilt has created a sample poster which clarifies the issue. It provides a handy reference for how to use pronouns. Here's some easy ones. She is an excellent student. He may sexually assault you. <laughs> Simple, right? They also show proper use of more advanced pronouns, z zir zirs and z here hears. I'll give you some examples. I support zir in the classroom by honoring zir's pronouns. I loved here's paper, and I honor here's pronouns. <laughs> <laughs> they always sound Nordic, don't they? <laughs> Above all, it urges people to uh, you know, replace such troublesome words like ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, mm. he or she, with the friendly words everybody, folks, or this person. Mm. Now, this may seem like a lot, but don't worry. If you make a mistake, they have the proper response. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. I apologize and will use the correct name and pronoun for you in the future. Well, that sounds like something out of one of George Orwell, he, him, his books. You know, I, I, uh, I'm, 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 trying to, I'm trying to be appropriate. Um, and I'm also mindful of Ben and everybody that, that, that has to take time after this show when I, when I swear. Ben, our producer, who's going to be yes. having to bleep you after the right. show. Okay, but so I just want to... You, you just want to say, get over your selves. I don't care what you call yourself. It doesn't yeah. matter. But how did we get to this point in well, life? I right. don't understand. Well, it also specifies even if Scientists researching the creation and growth of embryos have challenged 200 years of received wisdom by growing mice without using a fertilized egg. A landmark experiment at the University of Bath successfully produced healthy baby mice by passing completely the usual process of fertilization. Now, with this new breakthrough, I want to talk about it. It's called CRISPR-Cas9. 
What is it? It is a technology that comes out of a basic science project, which maybe we'll discuss, um, that allows scientists to make very precise changes to the DNA of cells. Nature's rules rewritten. For centuries, scientists have thought mammals like mice and humans can only be created when an egg is fertilized by a sperm, leading to an embryo. But now, in a groundbreaking experiment, they found they can bypass normal fertilization, only introducing sperm at a later stage. It's taken scientists closer to understanding the dramatic changes that give an embryo life. One intriguing possibility is that this technique could be used on skin cells. Turn them into embryos, fertilize them with a sperm, and that will lead to a healthy child. That could allow women whose ovaries have been damaged by cancer treatment to start a family. It could also allow gay men to have their own genetic children without the involvement of a woman. These are distant possibilities for now, theoretical, with many hurdles yet to be overcome, but they are now being discussed. By what criteria do we consider something to be genetically altered? Well, this takes us to some of the ethical questions. When you talk about splicing microbes, when you talk about altering what's inside of us, it's not far from that to dealing with the very core creation of humanity. Yeah. Where do you see the red ethical lines and where are, where are we with that? For me, um, one of the applications of this that I think raises concerns is the application in human embryos or human sperm or eggs. In other words, uh, changes to DNA that could be um, inherited by future generations. That is, if you think about it, pretty profound. It means really altering human evolution. The ethical waters get dark and deep here pretty quickly. For example, you and with those who work with you make this breakthrough, press boom. The information spreads worldwide. If somebody says, listen, what kind of eyes do you want on, on your next child? Or do you want your child to be tall? Or what height do you want? What an important point it seems to me that once something is discovered, it can't be undiscovered. No. I guess one question is, it seems inevitable to me, a lay person, that while you can't do this at the moment, guarantee blue eyes if you want them, or a six foot five person if you want it, you don't doubt that that day is coming. In Syria, there is nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Hundreds of displaced are being forced to flee again. We understand that fighting has broken out in Damascus, which is a Syrian regime-held area. These are just some of the thousands who relocated two weeks ago after a surrender of a Damascus suburb to government forces. It's the strongest typhoon to hit Taiwan in 21 years. The super typhoon was packing some of the strongest sustained winds on record. A wall of water lashed this fishing port, boats pitching in the seas as Typhoon Marathi passed directly over Taiwan early Wednesday. These ships crashed into each other, one almost entirely on its side. During past and bigger typhoons, we also had damage to the pier and the guidepost. But this time, the whole guidepost was pulled out and is nowhere to be seen. And that is really very scary. We've never seen waves like these. And there's another typhoon coming just behind it. All new at 11, incredible video tonight. A massive sinkhole has opened at the Mosaic's new Wells facility in Mulberry. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Wendy Ryan. And I'm Jamison Jeweler. Tonight there are reports of millions of gallons of contaminated water now flowing into the Florida aquifer. Eagle 8 flew over the huge chasm in the earth and spotted a cascading waterfall. Look at this, into the middle of what looks like a moonscape.
this Thursday with potentially New York's next great landmark. Are you ready for it? No. We have our first preview of what has been a secret project for a little while. Voila. Secret. Look at this. This oh. is going to be weird. Huh. <laughs> so it's going to be on the west side of Manhattan. It's 15 stories tall in an area called Hudson Yards, a new development opening in 2018. But ever since they unveiled it yesterday, a lot of people have been trying to figure out what exactly is it? It looks a little bit like a beehive. Yeah, some said a honeycomb, some said a stairwell, stairway to nowhere, um, a vessel. A spaceship. Mega real estate developer Stephen Ross believes this area will soon replace Rockefeller Center as the heart of New York City. And this is like the largest project ever done in the United States. So it's really building a city within the city. Not to mention the vessel, an interactive piece of art just unveiled that will sit at the center of the project's public plaza, made of 154 interconnecting flights of stairs that visitors can climb. The things today are all about sustainable neighborhoods. It's the same sentiment behind the entire project, because Ross believes this is where people will live, play, work, and more. People will see this replicated in other cities and countries around the world. The fighting broke out in Paris. Intermittent shelling and clashes resume on Friday night.